Welcome back here today on the beautiful campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College. Here today talking to Greg Hutching, who is the director of the public safety program here. Under that umbrella of public safety, as we'll discuss with Greg, we have corrections, law enforcement, fire one, EMT, uh, a whole a range of uh, public safety type programming. Uh, if you want to get involved in the public sector, if you want to be of service to your community, huge opportunities. We're going to talk about these as just a few of the over 40 degree and certification programs available right here on the campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. As mentioned, our guest today is Greg Hutching. Greg, you wear a big hat. You're uh, the director of the public safety programs here. First of all, thanks for taking the time today. Well, thanks for having me, Paul. I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. I've been trying to get you over here for a while. You guys are busy. Yes, you sir. guys have a lot going on. You've always got classes going on, some evening, some day. You probably have the single largest department here on campus, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Tell us first, what is the public safety umbrella of programs and what's included in that? Sure, Paul. The, the public safety programs include law enforcement, corrections, crossover from law enforcement to corrections, crossover from corrections to law enforcement, firefighter, EMT, and a whole slew of advanced and training as it, re as it relates to the public safety part of the program training. Uh, we also have something new that we're fixing to, to be a part of, which you're aware of, and Brandon Stevenson, our coordinator, is going to speak about that in a little bit, but the, uh, the unmanned vehicle program is going to be under the public safety umbrella as well. So we're really excited to have that join our team. Yeah, commonly referred to as drones. Yes, sir. Lots of misinformation, lots of non-information, lots of misconceptions and myths. FAA obviously involved to a great extent. People just don't know this series of workshops is actually an opportunity for people to kind of stick their toe in the water, find out if maybe they're interested in going further with that career, and also finding out some of the legality as it pertains to the federal government. Absolutely, because as you know, there have been new guidelines introduced even for someone on the street that's operating a drone. You have to be registered by a certain time frame, and it's going to continue to go down that track. So this is an opportunity for people to get their foot in the door, like you said, and become a part of this process as opposed to waiting until the process is finished and seeing the result of it. Yeah, and in specific, although we will talk about those specifics with Brandon, when it comes to the UVS or unmanned vehicle systems, otherwise drones, we're talking about their applications in agriculture, in transportation, in engineering, in surveying, um, even search and rescue as right. we go further. Um, huge opportunities for cost savings in a small department or a department with a small budget. Um, I'm excited about that. I know that you are too, just yes, to hear you sir. talk about it. I'm looking forward to hearing from Brandon. We've got Fire One. That is the initial entry level fire course that, for someone who wants to go into fire service. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, sir. The Fire One program that we're offering now, we don't offer the, the complete OCP, which would be Fire Two. Uh, we do offer the Fire One program, which qualifies you to be on the volunteer fire departments in the state of Florida. It also qualifies you. There are some departments that are requiring what they call a fire medic status. So if you're already a paramedic or an EMT, you take the Fire One program, then that qualifies you to work in, let's say, Walton County, for example. Or, or South Walton County. Um, the, it, it's, it's an additional training that's required as far as being cross-trained between medic and firefighter. Uh, we've been offering that program. We created that program here. It's probably been seven or eight years ago now. It's very successful. We do all the training for the Washington County Fire Departments. Uh, we, we're the sole provider of training. And, and that's pretty much who we, who we pattern our training around. Uh, however, we are looking at expanding that program. We've tried in the past for various reasons. It hasn't quite come to fruition as far as the Fire 2 program, but we are actively right now in the process of trying to get that established so we can offer the Fire 2 program here as well. Have you got a Fire One program starting soon, or is there one in progress right now? No, sir. We've had one complete recently. What we normally do is it's on an as-needed basis because our, cust our biggest customer is Washington County. We kind of go by the needs when their departments hire people. They send them to us. So it's kind of when they get the people together, they, they call us, and then we open an advertisement for anyone else that's interested in doing it. We're averaging right now, I would say, one, maybe two a year, but normally we do one Fire Academy a year. EMT, uh, Danny Page, a uh, local yes, guy, a lot of people know Danny, has been a long time uh, uh, paramedic, uh, currently working in Bay Medical Center, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. Uh, he has come on board as your instructor for EMT uh, classes. 
Talk a little bit about that program. Sure. Well, we brought, we brought Danny in. Uh, we have to have what's called an EMT program director, and that is Danny's title. Uh, you have to have certain specifications that I or, or none of our staff have here on the campus. So we're very fortunate to have someone that can work from an external partner that can come in. And this is not, I wouldn't call it a part-time job because it takes up a lot of his time. But he is full-time with, with the Bay County Fire Rescue or Panama City Fire Rescue uh, or Ambulance Service, as well as dedicating his time to us here. So he oversees that. The medical side of that program. Uh, excellent instructor, excellent personality. He's, he's brought on some really good people to work with him. So we're excited to see that program expand and grow. Um, now that's getting ready to crank up just shortly here. March 15th, yes sir. And there are openings in that class. That is correct. We do have openings in that class. Uh, it's one of those programs, what, what excites me about the public safety programs, Paul, is you're never going to get rich in this public safety line of work. That's but exciting? It's a, well, what's exciting about it is that if it's a calling and you have to believe in what you're doing and it's a decent salary. It's a decent living. It's an honest living. Uh, but the EMT program is one where you can go to school for three months, three nights a week and then you can go out in the field and you're making $30,000 a year working three or four days a week because they work 24 hour shifts. So, And you're giving back to your local community. You're there helping the people that you know, that you care for, and that you love. Yeah, I was being a little flippant about the, the <laughs> salaries, but in reality, of the three services, EMS actually pays traditionally more than what fire or law enforcement does. Yes, sir, that's correct. For starting personnel. Yes, sir, I, I, that's correct. So, again, want to underscore the fact that that class will be starting soon, uh, and there are openings in that class. You can go to the website, fptc.edu, or stop by Student Services right here on Hoyt Street. Will they also be able to go by your office at the Public Safety? A absolutely. We encourage that because we, have to, we try to streamline the process because Student Services has to deal with the entire campus. You know, we have Stacy Webb as our secretary, our administrative assistant. She's excellent with the paperwork and what she can do is she can help streamline the process so you don't get tied up in little unnecessary red tape, have to come back and get this or come go get that. You can sit down with you at one time and say this, this, that, and the other, and she can make your transition into the other uh, areas of this campus a lot easier. Well, then forgive me for that. I misspoke. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go to the public safety <coughs> anywhere on campus. Ask them where, uh, where Greg and Brandon and Joe hang out, uh, where public safety is. You'll be able to find that. So you've got uh, Fire One, you've got EMS. Now, are there any other uh, subspecialties or classes in addition to corrections and law enforcement? Sure, and, and still on the, on the Fire One side of that, we do offer, and they're, they're very rare that we need them, but we do offer certain schools like Fire Instructor, we do the EVOC Instructor School for the Vehicle Operations, uh, CPR First Responder Instructor, we offer, we, all, we offer those kind of classes. So if it relates to the public safety aspect of that, then we include that in there. Um, they are, like I said, they're short courses, they're what they call continuing education courses, they're not job preparatory courses. Um, so anytime that there's any type of credits that's needed for someone in the service that's currently in the field as an EMT or firefighter, they need to come at least call us and see what we got available because we can help them keep their credits maintained. Yeah, and that's a huge component. If you need CEUs, continuing education units in one of those fields, great opportunity right here at home to be right. able to satisfy those requirements. Yes, sir. Not too long ago, and I guess in the scheme of things, it's been two or three years, uh, joined you in a class over at the uh, football stadium. You were doing EVOC training. We actually put some cameras in the car, had some fun. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. Uh, that yes, sir. Um, if you've not been a part of an EVOC course, depending on, on what they're using, I've, they, I've taken them now where they've used fire trucks, where mm -hmm. they've used uh, uh, law enforcement vehicles, and also ambulances. When I worked yep. EMS a lot of years ago, another lifetime ago, actually had to do that course in a, in a big top heavy ambulance, and, and it gets pretty interesting. It's different, absolutely. The, the, the weight distribution and everything's different about that one. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time today. I know it's kind of a, a, a whirlwind here. We're just getting an overview of public safety. Is there, is there anything that we may have missed, anything that we overlooked, anything else that bears uh, mentioning? Yeah, yes. The only other thing I would say is that with our law enforcement academies, um, I want to stress the biggest thing, we do crossover from corrections to law enforcement. That's a big one for us. In other words, if you take in your corrections training, let's say you went through the Vernon Academy or a Department of Corrections Internal Academy and you're interested in doing more street law enforcement, you can take a lot of what you took in the original academy and apply it towards your law enforcement certification which cuts down the number of hours the academy is. When you take that academy class with us, the crossover class, we work with you as far as your schedule. We, all, we know that the prisons are on 12-hour shifts so there is an issue with getting to class in time. A lot of times a lot of classes in area schools you know, start class at 530. We work with our students that have to do that to work. That's what we're here for is to try to figure out ways to make it accessible for them. Same thing for a crossover from law enforcement into corrections because corrections is a big field right now. 
now. We also offer Paul some continuing education for law enforcement and correctional officers. We do the we do a lot of that. We on average we've trained 100 to 200 in service actual working officers a year. Uh, right now we've had a little bit of an issue with our Department of Corrections uh, partners because they just can't seem to figure out how to make a schedule work to where they can go to a two-week long class and work a 12-hour shift every day. So we're working on that aspect of it there too. And the other thing I, before we turn it over to Brandon or Joe, something I want people to be able to understand is that to be in law enforcement and corrections at this technical college, there are articulable credits that are offered from both of them. Uh, for example, at one time, and I'd have to up, make sure my facts are still up to date, but Chipola was offering 18 semester elective semester hours towards your criminal justice degree if you had your correction certification, or 21 hours towards your degree if you had law enforcement certification. So these are programs. Corrections is three and a half months if you can go full time, Monday through Thursday. We give you Fridays off so you can take care of your business and not miss any school. Monday through Thursday, it takes about three and a half months, and you can come out right then and make thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Law enforcement, it's a little bit longer. It's a seven hundred seventy-hour course. It is Pell Grant eligible as well. Uh, there are financial options available for corrections. Unfortunately, Pell Grant's not one of them, but we do have some partners with the One Stop and different funding options that that really help us out with that. Uh, so with the funding opportunities that are available, the the, credit, the college credits that are available, their opportunities are here for our local people to get this training and do the kind of thing that will, they can give back, love what they do, and enjoy what they do and make a decent living at it. Yeah, I just recently heard the statistic that um, the United States makes up only 5% of the world's population, but we account for 25% of those incarcerated. So definitely corrections, incarceration in general, a huge growth industry. Yes, sir. Northwest Florida seems to be the recipient of many of those facilities. Again, as you point out, corrections, huge opportunity for minimal investment of time to Absolutely. be certified to work and in a well-paid job Huge attrition rate, though. Saw a TV show just recently how, how, how many people don't make it past their first week in corrections. It's definitely a different world. You have to be suited for it. Thankfully, we have those people that, through attrition, make it. But um, congratulations on all of your programs, um, specifically those uh, law enforcement and corrections, which obviously allow people to give back to the community. Yes, sir. So often we see people attracted to the lights and siren field because of the, the adrenaline. Those people generally get weeded out pretty quickly. They'll either go into the field and wash out fairly quickly or just get tired of it because it's work. It's not glamorous and um, at times very scary. I think that all of those fields at times have been described as hours and hours of boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror when whatever your respective field is, re is called on. So uh, thanks for what you guys do. Thanks for being here today and, and thanks for uh, directing that program, obviously contributing greatly to the community. Well, thank you, Paul. We appreciate what you're doing to help us and to help the campus at what? Thank you, sir. Talking right now to Greg Hutching, who's the Director of Public Safety Programs here on the campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College. Just a few of the over 40 degree and certification programs offered right here in downtown Chipley. Literally every week I talk to somebody who's lived here for the bulk of their life. They drive by here every day on Highway 90 or South Boulevard. Don't know what we do. Don't know it's a school. Don't know the programs that are available here. State of the art programs like uh, Greg points out, uh, the drone program, the UVS unmanned vehicle systems programs just starting up this fall, as well as cyber security, everything from culinary to drafting to pharmacy tech uh, in this building, uh, soon to be audio production. Huge opportunity if you uh, need to retool your life, if you're recently divorced and looking for a new career, if you've been downsized or have lost your job, wonderful opportunity to restart your life with one of those over 40 degree and certification programs. We'll be right back.